Hi there. We are going to talk about ideas and idea management as part of project portfolio management. And I'm going to address uh, uh, the managing of ideas in the organizational hierarchy of the firm where the top executives uh, want to foster uh, development of ideas at the lower organizational levels and how projects can bring up ideas or how ideas can be developed into projects actually. Um, this final picture uh, shows that uh, there are multiple sources of project ideas and uh, this also indicates that it is beneficial to uh, um, create a lot of ideas but also that it is uh, necessary to have very effective way of evaluating in the later phases those ideas so that we can uh, very effectively kill uh, many of the ideas that uh, are not that uh, beneficial compared to the best ones. Well, uh, when we are talking about idea management systems, uh, we can see this kind of evolution. Earlier there were suggestion boxes in companies where employees could put their uh, uh, ideas, maybe uh, some uh, problems that could be uh, improved uh, in the work workplace and uh, maybe some uh, even new business ideas or ideas of developing new processes in companies. Well, now uh, we have the software tools, uh, we, we can use them to help employees to focus on specific business issues uh, and uh, we have uh, databases uh, where we can uh, uh, have some kind of a loop processes, looping processes where we can develop those ideas further and comment them and uh, we can more effectively share uh, the, the ideas and even uh, collect certain kinds of metrics about uh, the ideas and uh, uh, their performance, uh, idea, performance of idea management and so on. Well, uh, many uh, idea management approaches, they are campaign focused. It is very typical that uh, um, executives of the firm issue even some problems or uh, some strategic di uh, directions and asks then uh, the units to address this in certain idea campaigns. Well, uh, we can customize the way of how we are capturing the ideas. We can also uh, use different evaluation criteria and uh, we can use certain uh, appropriate work processes uh, and share uh, the ideas. Well, uh, a single shot idea campaign can uh, include the following elements. Uh, first, uh, information submission uh, and even we should there avoid uh, argumentation. It even can be that we shouldn't use the words like problem or an idea, but we could just uh, bring up issues if we like to be as neutral as uh, possible. Uh, then there could be uh, cross distribution uh, to interact across the ideas and uh, across people. Uh, interactive workshopping where we could use cognitive mapping even and then prioritize and success and bring up solutions. Well, uh, uh, the ideas are logically connected to the front end of innovation. So we have here an innovation process or new product development process if you like and uh, the front end is the very early part, the early phases of uh, that process. 
uh, and that front end phase brings up the concept, a kind of a product concept, which somehow imp includes also some market uh, aspects and so on, and uh, uh, evaluations about uh, the potential success in mass market. And then uh, after the front end phase, we can go to development, which really starts requiring even a lot of uh, money to invest uh, to take the product to the market. We also have uh, some uh, user concept and we go to NPD, which is New Product Development, or TSG, TSG which uh, is Technology Screening Gate, actually, that comes out from this uh, uh, cyclical uh, process. Well, uh, there is the funnel again, uh, and the um, gates are uh, of the innovation process are marked there. So we start with ideas and opportunities, and uh, we end with uh, product uh, outcome or change uh, from that started from an idea, and we selected and combined the ideas and abandoned some of them, and so on. And uh, well, th there was the kind of a front end mark there. And uh, now, how uh, companies uh, manage uh, the front end of innovation and uh, especially uh, manage the fostering of ideas in, in that front end? Uh, this picture uh, illustrates uh, the content of our article marked there. And uh, uh, in this picture, we have this uh, non-linear front end of innovation project. And uh, then we have management control and we have management control mechanisms accordingly. And what this management control means, how executives uh, use these management control mechanisms to affect the early phase, that is the front end phase, of innovation and in the phase where ideas are developed and uh, brought forward. So management control. What is management control and what was management control in our study? Well, uh, we can see that there are four levers of control four kind of a systems uh, that all uh, explain the possible approach to business strategy. Uh, uh, bottom left we have diagnostic control system, uh, where strategy is seen as a plan and uh, we have very systematic way of uh, doing, uh, for example, projects and idea developments. Uh, in our study this meant uh, that many companies used these idea management systems, the software uh, that gave some uh, uh, processual ways of uh, uh, managing the idea development and also from organizational uh, wise they had uh, development boards or innovation boards consisting of middle managers that had certain uh, criteria of evaluating the ideas and uh, deciding whether to invest uh, them uh, uh, further. Uh, then uh, to the top right of this picture we have boundary systems uh, where strategy is considered as a position uh, the top executives can uh, define boundaries, the limits, where the ideas and their development should be. Then uh, to the bottom right, we have interactive control system, systems, where strategy is uh, seen as a pattern of streams of actions. Uh, and we can accept strategic uncertainties and interact more. And uh, to the top, uh, left, we have belief system where 
uh, strategy is considered as a perspective or collective mind where we are basing our idea development, for example, on core values. And this means that if we uh, use the belief systems way of management control, this even means that the, the top executives are walking around uh, uh, in, uh, with their subordinates and they are discussing vividly and they are interacting so that uh, uh, the way of creating the collective mind and the direction and the values uh, are properly created. And if we go back to this picture that I already showed you, uh, what the management control mechanisms actually were that the executives were using. Uh, we found that in many companies uh, they used, for example, idea management systems or these middle management innovation boards or development boards, uh, which is very systematic ways of treating the ideas. And uh, that constrained quite a lot uh, the idea development uh, to a rather, uh, let's say, um, modest level. and. Uh, because we had very systematic uh, approaches in use that also restricted really uh, the newness in a way. So even for the companies, they argued that, uh, yes, we appreciate newness and novelty and uh, the, new, uh, the more novel, the better. But in fact, those uh, uh, issues that were really novel, they they didn't survive as ideas or projects in their these processes. But the processes were uh, very much uh, using the typical evaluation criteria, even maybe profitability calculations, uh, maybe uh, some very focused uh, way of thinking about uh, uh, the strategy and aligning the ideas to strategy, which again constrained uh, the ideas and idea management. So many of those uh, companies used the kind of a diagnostic control systems and uh, there were these kinds of a systems in between the executives and uh, the actual projects. But there were few companies, at least one, uh, that uh, had uh, the belief system approach where really ex executives were themselves personally communicating with the project people and also with uh, those uh, people uh, issuing ideas and developing them further. And in that way, uh, that uh, provided a much more open uh, platform of uh, uh, developing, not so, in not so controlled way, uh, the uh, ideas and uh, to make also a connection to the management of the whole firm uh, from those idea uh, development uh, arrangements. Well, um, the information flow and the kind of a potential filters in an organization is an important issue uh, in uh, ideation and idea management. And here I use uh, Ansoff's, uh, the famous strate strategy uh, researcher I Igor Ansoff's uh, idea of filters, where there is an environment and uh, there is a surveillance filter that means that whether we can see the environment and obtain the data. But then if we can have the data, then we still have a filter that is the mentality filter between the data and perception, whether we can understand what this means, what we see. And then uh, uh, there is the power filter uh, that uh, is between the perception and information. And power doesn't mean only the organizational hierarchy and the power of executives, but it also uh, means the power of 
certain groups in a firm. For example, if someone is a technological specialist in certain technology area A, uh, so another specialist from another area uh, doesn't necessarily go to this expert to say uh, some new ideas or hints or blame, for example, him uh, under, uh, misunderstanding something because there is a kind of a, uh, expert power in a way that is respected by individuals. And uh, this all means that uh, uh, the data that is seen from the in, uh, environment and, uh, and taken forward uh, to action has many filters in between and it even might be that uh, things don't uh, go up to the action level, they don't reach the action level because of these all kinds of filters that there are in the organization. And this also applies that the lower level individuals working in the organizations don't necessarily have the connection with executives. And also in the study that I just explained about the ideas and idea management and management control, our finding that there is not so much, uh, it tends to be that there is not so much this kind of belief systems where executives would discuss uh, directly to lower level workers. So uh, that also means that there probably is filters uh, in between and these filters can be these idea management systems, these softwares and these middle management innovation and development boards that are in use. Um, to sum up with the following pictures, uh, my argument is that uh, uh, there are two important uh, knowledge management strategies uh, that can enhance uh, the creativity in a network. There is codification, there is knowledge that is stored centrally and can be accessed. And uh, uh, the knowledge or the ideas are now marked by me with these fishes. And then there is personalization, knowledge which is closely tied to person or persons and uh, uh, can only be shared through direct contact, contact. And here I have this group of persons. And my message is the following. Uh, the ideas, the knowledge is in the aquarium and uh, the persons, the people are outside. They are a kind of anglers that uh, might try to catch the fish, the great ideas from the aquarium. But the question is how the anglers would become deep divers and how we can get those people to dive in the aquarium and interact uh, not only with uh, the ideas but also to interact with each others. Okay, this was about ideas and idea management in project portfolio management. Looking forward to seeing you again in uh, the forthcoming lectures. See you. Bye.